Hey, this is Presh Tullwalker. 3 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of y is equal to 5 to the power of z. Find all solutions for integers x, y, and z. I thank Matteo for the suggestion. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. If you experiment with the numbers, you might have come across the following two solutions. 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. That's a famous right triangle triple. And 3 to the power of 0 plus 4 to the power of 1 is equal to 5 to the power of 1. If you found these two solutions, congratulations. You have intuitively found the only two solutions to this equation for integers x, y, and z. But for a mathematician, that's not good enough. One needs to prove that these are the only two solutions. I will present a solution based on Nick's mathematical puzzles number 98. For this type of problem, it's best to read the solution and work through it. But for completeness in this video, I will present a video solution. However, I will go very quickly. Consider it a speed run proof. We will first analyze 3 to the power of x. There are three cases for x. x can either be greater than 0, equal to 0, or less than 0. We'll consider each case in turn. If x is greater than 0, that implies z is greater than 0, which means that y is greater than or equal to 0. We'll analyze the equation modulo 3. 3 is equal to 0 mod 3, 4 is equal to 1 mod 3, and 5 is equal to negative 1 mod 3. We'll raise the first equation to the power of x and simplify. We'll raise the second equation to the power of y and then simplify. And we'll raise the third equation to the power of z. We will then substitute into the first equation. Upon simplification, we can see that z has to be an even number. That means z is equal to 2w for some integer w. We can then substitute that into the equation. Then 4 is equal to 2 squared, so we can subtract 2 to the power of 2y from both sides. The right-hand side is then a difference of squares, so we can factor that. Then, since 3 is a prime, we must have that each of the factors is 3 raised to some power. So we set one factor equal to 3 to the power of a, and we set the other factor equal to 3 to the power of b. We have a plus b is equal to x, and a is greater than b. Upon summing the two equations, we can then see that 3 to the power of a plus 3 to the power of b is equal to 2 times phi to the power of w. If b were greater than 0, then 3 would divide the left-hand side of the equation, but not the right-hand side of the equation. This is a contradiction. Thus, we have b is equal to 0. We can substitute that in. We now have two equations, and we're going to focus on them. We'll consider each of these equations modulo 3. Now, we will add both of these equations to get the following equation. This implies that w plus 1 has to be an even number, which means w is an odd number. Let's now subtract these two equations. From here, y plus 1 must be an odd number, which means y is an even number. If y were an even number greater than 2, then 2 to the power of y would be greater than 2 to the power of 3, which is equal to 8. So let's analyze 5 to the power of w plus 2 to the power of y modulo 8. On the one hand, it's equal to 5 to the power of w modulo 8. Since w is an odd number, we can analyze the powers of 5. 5 to the power of w must then be equal to 5. But now we know that 5 to the power of w plus 2 to the power of y is also equal to 3 to the power of x. So let's analyze the powers of 3 modulo 8 we can see that 3 to the power of x is either equal to 1 mod 8 or 3 mod 8. 
So we have 5 to the power of w plus 2 to the power of y is equal to 3 to the power of x, which is either equal to 1 or 3 mod 8. But now we have a contradiction because we've shown it's equal to 5, and we've shown it must be equal to 1 or 3 mod 8. Thus, we cannot have that y is greater than 2. Since y is even, and it's greater than or equal to 0, there are two cases that y is equal to 0 or 2. Let's work each case. Suppose y is equal to 0. Substituting in, we can then see that 3 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 5 to the power of z. Working modulo 4, we can then simplify. This implies that 3 to the power of x is equal to 0 mod 4, which is impossible. Thus, we have a contradiction. So y cannot be equal to 0. So we're left with the case that y is equal to 2. Let's substitute that into the second equation. We can then solve that w is equal to 1. z is then equal to 2w, which is equal to 2. So we have 3 to the power of x plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared, which thus means that x is equal to 2. So this is one solution, that x is equal to y, which is equal to z, which is equal to 2. In fact, that's the only solution where x is greater than 0. There are two more cases to consider, so let's now work on the case that x is equal to 0. We can substitute this into the equation and simplify. We can see that x is equal to 0 implies that z is greater than 0, which implies that y is greater than or equal to 0. Let's now analyze the equation modulo 3. We can simplify this equation. We will then consider the powers of 2 modulo 3. We can see that z has to be an odd number. From here, we will analyze the equation modulo 8. We now need to consider the powers of 5 modulo 8. Since z is an odd number, 5 to the power of z is equal to 5 modulo 8. So we simplify this equation. Now, if y is greater than or equal to 2, 4 to the power of y will be equal to 0 mod 8. So we thus have 1 is equal to 5 mod 8. But this is a contradiction. So we cannot have y is greater than or equal to 2. We must have y is equal to 0 or y is equal to 1. So let's analyze each of these cases. Suppose y is equal to 0. We can substitute in. We then get the equation that 2 is equal to 5 to the power of z. But there are no integer solutions to this equation. So we cannot have y is equal to 0. We are left with the case that y is equal to 1. If we substitute y is equal to 1, we get 1 plus 4 is equal to 5 to the power of z. This has an obvious solution that z is equal to 1. So this gives the solution x is equal to 0, and y and z are both equal to 1. So we've solved this case. We have one more case to solve, which is x is less than 0. Let's work on this. If x is less than 0, what would happen if y were greater than or equal to 0? In that case, z would have to be greater than 0. In this equation, let's subtract 4 to the power of y from both sides. By the given assumptions, 5 to the power of z and 4 to the power of y are both integers. So their difference will be an integer. But since x is less than 0, the left-hand side is not an integer. This is a contradiction. In other words, there are no integer solutions for the stated conditions. y cannot be greater than or equal to 0. We must have that y is less than 0. If x and y are both less than 0, then the sum of 3 to the x plus 4 to the y will be less than or equal to 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4, which is less than 1. This implies that z is less than 0. So x, y, and z are all less than 0. Let's let a be negative x, b be negative y, and c be negative z, so that a, b, and c are positive. So our equation then becomes the following. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 3 to the power of a multiplied by 4 to the power of b multiplied by 5 to the power of c. We can then simplify this equation and we get the following result. Now 5 is a factor on the left-hand side 
but 5 is not a factor on the right-hand side. This is a contradiction. Therefore, there are no integer solutions for these conditions. Thus, we've solved the problem. We can see that if x is less than 0, there are no integer solutions. If x is greater than 0, there is exactly one solution that x is equal to y is equal to z is equal to 2. And if x is equal to 0, there is exactly one solution that x is equal to 0 and y and z are both equal to 1. So there are exactly two solutions to this equation in integers x, y, and z. Wow. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.